Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use your NRF24L01 Plus transceivers to initiate master slave type communication between two Raspberry Pis. This is a second tutorial um, in this series. The first one, I show you how to wire up your NRF24L01 uh, transceivers, download the packages, and initiate simple communication like a send receive type communication between the two Raspberry Pis. Uh, in this one, I'm going to show you how to do two-way communication so that you have your master-slave set up. All right, so in the last video, we created this file called receive.py, and I'm not going to adjust receive.py. Instead, I'm just going to save, uh, copy that file over and create a new file from receive.py that is slave.py. So what I mean by slave is slave will be like the Raspberry Pi that is, say, connected to a temperature sensor. So we ask our master, our master Pi is going to ping the slave and go, hey, yo, slave, what's up? Like, what's the temperature? And uh, so we're going to need to, um, you know, tell it what, what it is. So let's create some functions here. I'm going to create a function that's called get temp. And this is going to be an absolutely trivial function. It goes, Zan, why are you doing this? And it's just to show you, like, you know, you can execute the function and whatever this complicated message is that or function is that generates your temperature value of 25 can go here that you can then call on. We're then going to return a string value of our temp from this. So it's very, it's trivial, but like here you would actually call on your GPIO pins, your analog digital converter, whatever, uh, to do that. We're also going to create a new function called send data. And the reason why I'm breaking it up like this and into it, we're going to pass our ID and our value is because maybe we have more than one sensor, right? Maybe we have a temperature sensor, an ultrasound sensor, whatever. So we need like an ID on our master end so we know what value we're actually getting from what sensor and so on. So here we started listening and we're listening initially for our master to contact us and say, hey, give me whatever value. And then we get the value, whatever the value is, and then we send the value. And before we can send the value though, we need to stop listening to our radio because we can't send while we are listening. So we're gonna stop listening and then uh, let's give it a little bit of a, a sleep here just so that we know that it actually has stopped, uh, like actually shut down. And then we're going to set, create an instance of our message, and our message will be our ID plus our uh, value that was passed in. And remember, we can only send a maximum of 32 bytes, so your ID tag and your value must be less than or equal to 32 bytes, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. We're then going to print about to send the message. And then we're actually going to send it, so radio.write message. And then we can say, uh, let's say, send the data to the master. And then we can boot up the radio again, like uh, so that we're listening. Because after this point, we've sent the data that we were supposed to send. And now we want to listen for our next command. Great. All righty. So, Going back through uh, what we wrote in the receive.py, so we have our acknowledgement payload, we wait for something to actually come in, we then get that message, we then decode it into a string that you and I understand. You don't have to do this, but I'm doing it because I like it. And then we are going to do something based off of what that string is. So we, we, we're going to want to react we're going to want to react to a command, so we want to react to the command from the master, and so we're going to say our command is string. You know, we don't have to do this, but just for clarity, and then we can say if the command is equal to get temp, you can imagine where this is going, it's pretty straightforward. We should get the temperature, right? Because you know, it's asking us to get the temperature. So we're going to say our temp ID is going to be equal to temp. And we're going to say our, we're going to get our temp value. Let's scroll down a bit here. 
our temp value is going to be equal to get the temperature, whatever that function is, so the trivial 25 we should be getting from that. And then we can just call on our send data function. We're gonna pass in our temp ID. We're gonna pass in our temperature value. And then we will reset our command so that it doesn't keep doing this regardless of what the next string value is. You know, So we'll just reset the command to nothing. And that should be it. So let's give that a save. Now we're going to have to change our send pi. We're actually sending a command and we have to prepare this end to actually receive whatever that value is that we call for. So if we want to say get the temperature, we're going to uh, need to receive that temperature. So I'm going to save over send.py as master.py. So it'll be a different file. And the majority of this will stay the same, except we need to open a reading pipe. Speaking of which, we didn't open up a writing pipe on the other end. So that reminds me, let's go back to our slave. So we have our reading pipe here, but we can't write without a writing pipe. So we're gonna open up a writing pipe and our writing pipe is going to be the zero address of our pipe. So we're already using one as our reading pipe. Uh, so our writing pipe will be the first address there. So give that a save before we go any further, otherwise this won't work. So knowing that, uh, we want to definitely open up a writing pipe on our master.py, and our writing pipe is going to be one, uh, sorry, our writing pipe is going to be address one, and if our writing pipe is address one, our reading pipe is going to, of course, be address zero. And we're gonna print the details just like before, and then we're going to create a function just like uh, we did for the other one. And this function is going to allow us to receive our data. So let's give it an easy to remember name, like receive data. And we're going to print ready to receive data. Well, that's not actually quite true because we haven't put it into listening mode yet. So let's quickly do that and hope they won't notice and uh, then we're going to do the same thing that we did before in the other one for our receiving end where we are going to wait and we're going to wait for something to actually come in so by at this point when we call receive data we're calling it after we've sent our command out so we're gonna say while like while the radio is uh, not receiving anything We're going to sleep. And then as soon as something starts coming in, we're going to break out of this, and then we're going to uh, preemptively populate a value for our received message. And we are going to read our radio and populate received message. And we need to get our dynamic payload size. All right, so we have our received message and we can decode our received message, which will be in bytes into our like uh, string characters that you and I understand. So let's tr translating received message into Unicode characters. And we will pre we will create an instance of a string to which we will uh, go through every value in our received message. And see, the thing is, is when you transmit, like we are transmitting a temperature, right? A temperature of 25 in our received message. It's not actually two and five that are being sent. It's the Unicode encoding for two and five, which is within the range of n being greater than or equal to 32 and n being less than or equal to 126. So if it's in there, then we will append to our string the decoded character version of n and then we have our string. So then we can print our slave sent us and what did our slave send us? It sent us a string. And at this point, so we've received our message from our slave, so then we will stop listening because the master needs to 
shout out the orders, right? So you can't be listening when he's shouting. And then we'll just go down to our while true loop here and we will change some things trivially just for uh, clarification. So we'll create a command and our command will be get temp, which I believe is the conditional I created down here. Yep, get temp. So it'll be command is equal to get temp. And then we'll just say that our message is equal to listing of our command. And I'll comment the old message out. So then we will send our message of get temp in list format and we will print that out. That's okay. Now, before we would send our message hello world and then we would check to see if there is a uh, like a return reply acknowledgement payload. And if there wasn't, okay, if there was great, if there wasn't whatever, we'll just sleep again and send out our hello world message again. Well, right now we need to go and receive data, but we don't want to prepare ourselves to receive data unless we know for sure that we have actually got our message delivered and we would know for sure by uh, checking our returned payload. So let's preemptively send this out on our slave. And by that, I mean, we're going to, first thing we're going to do when we enter our loop on our slave, oh, isn't this updating? There we go. The first thing we're going to want to do on our slave is write an acknowledgement payload. So write an acknowledgement payload. And what are we going to send? We're going to send our ACK payload, which we have not initiated yet. So let's, uh, let's, uh, cut this down below acknowledgement payload we're going to send our acknowledgement payload and the length of our acknowledgement payload so we're preemptively sending this for when we actually receive something so let's give that a save and then over here we're going to be receiving our acknowledgement payload uh, we'll send out a return payload or, uh, or we, we will get our return payload which is our acknowledgement payload and when we do receive it, we can say like, oh, hey, here is our acknowledgement payload. Everything's cool. Let's actually receive our uh, data. So receive data. And that will put us through this function here. We'll start listening. All right. So let's give this a save. So now we have one end that sends out the command, the master that sends out the command, get temperature. When the slave receives that message, get temperature, it then goes through the complicated function of getting the temperature and then sending uh, that temperature over the airwaves. So let's get going and uh, launch this. So first we're gonna want to get our slave up and running because our slave is gonna wait for a command to come to it. So we will say sudo python3 slave.py. And there we go, just like before, it's now waiting for a message to come in. And then on our master side, there's master.py, we're gonna type in sudo python3 master.py. All right, see here, cool, right? So here we're sending the message get temp, and we received a payload data, and our slave sent us, it's scrolling by here, it's a little, our payload there, there you go, so our slave sent us temp25. And so now we know that our temperature that the slave is reading is a value of 25. Looking over at the slave end, we see uh, we received this array of bytes. Oh, geez. And that message there ah, is get temp. And so we need to get the temperature. We should send the temperature, about to send the message, and then we sent the data. Perfect. So now we have established back and forth communication of strings between two Raspberry Pis in a kind of practical example of what we, where we would pull data from a sensor and then send that sensor data over to our master. Pretty cool, right? I hope you enjoyed this one. Now, Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi communication is absolutely awesome, but there might be a time when you want to establish communication between an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. After all, an Arduino is much better for actually getting like uh, analog sensors such as temperature sensors connected to it. So in the next video, I will show you how to set up a trivial communication example between a Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. See you then.